What's happening guys, it's Cooper Carter here for G66 and on this week's Fractal Friday, I wanna talk through five ways to get the absolute most out of your Fractal unit, whether you're an experienced user or a brand new one. So whether you've been a part of the Fractal family for a while or you're the proud new owner of an Axe FX3, an FM9, or an FM3, I want to talk through five things to keep in mind to really get the most out of your Fractal unit, no matter what level you're at. But before I get to those five, I want to give you two quick tips right at the top. We'll call these tip number zero and 0.5. Tip number zero is read the manual. Now I know that manuals as a general rule are not known for being incredibly fun reads, but like with so many other rules, Fractal is the exception in this case. Matt Picone has spent a ton of time making each and every manual in the Fractal audio lineup a joy to read. My very first job for Fractal was editing the manual for the Axe 2 way back in 2011. Matt's a great writer and I promise you, you guys will get a ton out of actually putting in the time and reading the manual. So tip number 0.5 then is join the Fractal Audio Forum at forum.fractalaudio.com. It's an incredibly knowledgeable, supportive community, and I highly encourage you guys to spend some time there, throw out a question, chime in with some comments. If there's something the manual hasn't covered, if you're wondering about a best practice scenario for something you're trying to implement in your unit, go to the forum. And now let's get into my five big tips for really getting the most out of your unit. Number one, understand your levels. Now, I put levels as number one, not because I think it's the absolute most important thing to understand about fractal units, but because I do think it's one of the most misunderstood elements of fractal units, and I certainly see a ton of questions about it. In every fractal unit, there are three main levels to consider. Your input level, your preset level, and your output level. The instrument input on a fractal unit is designed to be somewhat of an ideal average between a Marshall amp and a Fender amp. So when you input your guitar into an AxeFX3 or an FM9 or an FM3, you can treat this input just like plugging into the front of an amp. You can put pedals in front of it, you can put any kind of guitar you want in front of it, and it's going to react like the average of a Marshall and a Fender. Which brings me to probably the number one most misunderstood screen in a fractal unit, the AD input levels. That's this screen in the AxeFX3 and this screen on the FM9, and on the FM3 you have the input pad parameter. Now, why do I say this screen is the most misunderstood? Well, because these parameters have absolutely no effect on the level of your signal going into your preset. Let me say that again. The input level and input pad parameters are not gain controls. They don't affect the overall level at all. They're there to optimize the signal to noise ratio or the SNR of your guitar's signal into the AD or analog to digital converters at the top of the unit. We'll talk about why you might want to change these levels in a second, but just keep in mind that any changes you make to these levels are applied before the AD converter, and then before your signal leaves that converter, a change is applied in an equal but opposite way. If you lower the control, the converter is then going to turn it back up. If you raise it up, it's going to bring it back down so that the signal going into the converter is always the same level that's leaving it. Again, this control is not going to affect the level of your signal at all when it hits your preset. So there are two very simple ways to set the input to the AD. The first way is not to set it, just leave it on the default. And to be honest, this is what I do. 50% works for all of the guitars that I have. I've never felt like my signal is noisy. The AxeFX3 and FM9 and FM3 are incredibly low noise units with very high quality converters. So I don't really find it necessary to set these levels. But if you do wanna set these levels, it's very straightforward. Maybe you have an incredibly hot guitar, or maybe you have a very low output vintage instrument you might want to set the signal to noise ratio to be a little more appropriate for those instruments. But the number one rule is set the level for the hottest guitar that you have and then just leave it. There is no reason to constantly adjust this level. So take a look at the input LEDs on the front of your unit and get your loudest guitar and strum one really hard big open chord. Now adjust the level to where that big open chord is just ever so often tickling the red LEDs. Tickling the red is good. These red input LEDs do not mean that your unit is clipping. Let me say that again. The red input LEDs are not clipping LEDs. So strum a big open chord with your hottest guitar, change the AD level until that chord is just tickling the red, and then forget this parameter. 
Really, almost any value is fine here. If you have a vintage strat, for example, you may very well be running this AD level at 100%, and that is 100% fine. If you have a very modern, super high output guitar, for example, a Music Man Majesty, you may very well be running this parameter near 10%. That's totally fine too. The one exception to this rule though is don't put the input level below 5% on an Axe FX3 or an FM9, because that will start to take some tone out of your guitar. It's just not meant to be set that low. So once you've got the input level set correctly, the next level to think about is your preset level. This can be adjusted in literally dozens of ways. There is a level parameter on almost every block in the unit. And so for your sanity, I recommend that as a best practice, you only ever adjust the overall level of a preset internally with the amplifier level. This is a 100% tonally and gain transparent level parameter that simply brings the volume of your preset up or down. I recommend leveling all of your presets around 0 dB. You'll see that all of the factory presets are leveled around there. This gives you plenty of headroom, and it also gives you an easy reference point for your presets level. And you can do this by very simply going to the preset leveling screen, striking again a big open chord, and then adjusting the amplifier level to reach 0. So that's input level and preset level, which brings us to output levels. Now the output levels on all fractal units are directly adjustable on the hardware with physical knobs, but the output level is dependent on your preset level and some global settings. The physical output level knobs are just that, the output level. They raise or lower the output after your preset, so they are transparently turning up or down what you're hearing on your grid. This is what you'll use to send out the appropriate level to your speakers or a mixing board or your headphones. If you've leveled your presets around 0 dB like we talked about, then you shouldn't have any problems with clipping. So three quick tips about output levels. First is the nominal output level. If you feel like you aren't getting enough level out of the unit, even when you're cranking your level knob way up, this is probably because you're sending into a pro level piece of gear and the unit ships at minus 10, which is more appropriate for consumer grade gear. You can put this to plus four to get a considerable amount more level out of your unit. But keep in mind that plus four will mean you have a lot less room to work with on the knob if you're sending into a consumer grade piece of equipment. Tip number two is that if you need to send the exact same output level to let's say front of house night to night, or you're very particular about where you have your levels set for your own home studio, you can use the setup utility ADC levels screen to see the exact value of the potentiometer on your output knob. And output level tip number three, if you are using the Axe FX3, the FM9, or the FM3 into an actual physical amplifier, whether it's in the effects loop or in front of the amp, you're gonna wanna use outputs three and four on the Axe FX, three on the FM9, or two on the FM3, turn the output levels all the way up, and you'll get unity gain. Number two, understand what you're hearing. Fractal Audio units are the world's leading guitar processors for a reason. They do an incredible job of simulating the entire signal chain of a guitarist's rig, from pedals, to the amplifier, to the cabinet, to the microphones, to reverb spaces, you name it, the units can do it. But this can be a big change for guys coming from physical amplifiers. Going from having, let's say, a 100 watt head with a giant cab blowing your face off, peeling paint off the walls, all that volume, Going from that to a modeler, which is simulating a recorded guitar tone. If you've spent a lot of time in the studio tracking with a physical amplifier, you're used to putting the amp in another room, miking it up, and listening to the guitar through monitors. That's what a modeler is simulating. That's what the Axe FX3, the FM9, or the FM3 is going to give you. This again can be a very different experience if you're used to that amp in the room feel. So here are a few things you can do to help ease that transition if you are one of those guys that's coming from an amp in the room and going into the wide world of modeling. First off, add some reverb to a preset. That can be a fantastic tone to send to a mixing engineer for them to then do things with it, but that might not be the most fun tone to play along to when you're jamming. A tiny bit of ambience or a little bit of small room can go a long way toward bringing you more of that amp in the room feel. Second, if you're on an Axe FX3 and you have the latest firmware, then you have access to full res IRs. Unlike the over 2,000 other IRs in the unit, which simulate the sound of a close mic on a cabinet, 
Full res IRs can contain up to 1.37 seconds of data, so they can capture the sound of a room mic. When you mix those into a tone, you can really start to approach that amp in the room feel, and you get a huge dimensionality to your tone. <laughs> Third, if you really are having trouble getting used to the direct recorded studio tone that you're getting from modeling both the amplifier and the cabinet into a full range system like studio monitors or PA speaker or headphones, go ahead and add another output to your preset before the cabinet block, send out into a power amp and an actual physical guitar cabinet. That way you're getting all of the benefits of Fractal's amp modeling, but you're still getting that amp in the room tone that you love. There is no reason not to explore all the possibilities that Fractal units open up to you, including what you're listening to them through. Which segues perfectly into number three. Go with what you know. Especially if you are new to the world of Fractal Audio, there can be a little bit of option paralysis with just how many things instantly become available to you in this incredible digital domain. There are almost 300 amplifiers in Fractal units. There are well over 2,000 different cabinet impulse responses dozens of effects, and hundreds and hundreds of parameters to play with. It's hugely exciting, but especially if you're coming from a very simple traditional rig, it can be a little bit overwhelming. So when you're first starting out, go with what you know. Let's say you're a JCM 800 player. You've got a couple pedals, you go into a 4x12, and that's your rig, you've loved it for years. Why not start out with the factory preset JCM 800? It's an ideal version of a JCM 800 with a couple of pedals, a great 412 cabinet, mic'd up really well with a nice reverb. Sure, you could jump into the advanced amp parameters and start swapping out tubes and adjusting the bias, but if you'd rather keep things simple, click the amp block. The first page you're gonna be on is the authentic tab, which shows you exactly what you would see on your physical amp, and start playing with the knobs there that you know and love. Likewise, you've got dozens of drive pedals to choose from, but if you're just getting used to the world of Fractal and you're a TS-808 guy, go with the TS-808. It's got the tone you know, it's got the knobs you know, and you'll be able to get to your sound that much faster. And once you're comfortable, start exploring, which brings me to number four. Forget everything you know. While at first it can be helpful to go with what you know and learn how to get around the unit with familiar sounding and familiar looking gear, the greatest thing about being in the digital domain is that there really are no rules. In the real world, there are a lot of things that we can do, for example, to amplifiers that require a lot of advanced knowledge of electrical engineering, and a soldering iron and getting into dangerously high electronics. On an Axfex or an FM3 or an FM9, biasing an amp is just a click of a mouse, swapping out the tubes, completely changing the tone stack of an amplifier. If you wanna cascade four drive pedals into each other, you can do that. And you don't even need any nine volt batteries. One of my all time favorite fractal stories comes from a friend of mine named Bobby Harrison, an amazing player who for a very long time played for the world's premier Pink Floyd cover band, the Brit Floyd. Now, guitarists who are big David Gilmour fans are among some of the most detail-oriented, tone-obsessed people on the planet. I know this because I am one of them. David Gilmour fans spend a lot of time digging into what gear he used on what album, how he got the absolutely beautiful tones that he's so famous for. So it came as a huge surprise to a lot of David Gilmour fans in Fractal Land when Bobby retired from the Brit Floyd and released his presets to the public, and people saw that a lot of his tones were not based on amplifier types or pedal types in the Axe Fex that corresponded to the gear David Gilmore used in the real world. A lot of his presets were based around the Friedman BE amplifier, which is more or less a Marshall. And of course, David Gilmore is so well known for using a high watt almost his entire career. My favorite thing about this story is that it shows that you shouldn't let yourself be limited by what somebody has done in the physical world or what gear has worked for another player. For different players to get the same tones, it'll sometimes take very different gear. And in Fractal Units, we have the luxury of swapping gear at a moment's notice with just a mouse click. Just because something is done one way in the physical world, or even one way in the Fractal world, it doesn't mean that your approach needs to look exactly the same. If what it takes to get you to a tone is an unconventional approach, that's 100% fine, and Fractal gives you the tools to do that. Number five, harness the power of scenes and channels. Now this really should have been number one, because for my money, by far the most powerful and useful features of the Axfex 3, the FM9, and the FM3 are scenes and channels. These are brilliantly conceived 
to allow you to pack a ton of different sounds into just one preset. Once you build out a rig within a preset, scenes allow you to access eight completely separate versions of that rig, and with at least four channels on every block, you essentially have four completely separate pieces of gear inside every block that can be switched to at a moment's notice via scenes. Now, fully diving into the power of scenes and channels is outside the scope of this video, but I've put a link in the description below to a video that I've done previously on the power of scenes and channels. I highly recommend you guys spend some time digging into this, and I think it will become clear very quickly just how powerful these features can be. So those are five areas that I hope have given you some ideas about how you'd like to further explore your fractal unit. A few of them are a bit more technical, while a few of them are maybe a bit more cerebral about how to approach the unit itself, how to approach designing tones from the ground up, copying in tones that you hear outside, maybe from other players or maybe from different versions of your rig. All in all, though, I hope what's very clear is that in every fractal unit, whether you're on the flagship Axpex 3, the new FM9, or the FM3, there are so many different things to explore, and I hope you've seen that doing so can be a really rewarding and fun experience. Again, I highly encourage you guys to check out the manual for your units. It will unlock a ton of secrets, but to truly get the absolute most out of your fractal unit, I encourage you guys to check out classes.coopercarter.com for my complete Axfx3, FM9, and FM3 Masterclass series. I'm Cooper Carter for G66, and I will see you guys next week on Fractal Friday, where we'll be digging into some of my all-time favorite fractal audio drive pedals.